Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Would you join me in the scripture reading today coming from the book of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 6, beginning with verse number 45. Mark, chapter 6, beginning with verse number 45. This is what the Bible says. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethesda while he sent the multitude away. When he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Now when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea. It was alone. He was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing. The wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out. But they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat uh, to them, and the wind ceased. They were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. For they had not understood about the loaves, because their heart was heartened. Let's talk about the storms of life, the storms of life. Uh, I would bet you that all of us right now are going through some kind of storm in their lives. Some of us right now are going through some physical storms, the illnesses, the pain, the suffering. Many of us are going through the storms of life right now. And I believe that there may be someone here today listening, going through some marital storms. And your storm may be a tornado, marital conflict and separation and divorce. You may be going through a storm dealing with your children and your grandchildren. They are going astray and you are battling with them. And there's someone here who are dealing with storms, trying to be a caretaker for someone who is ill. What a storm that is. Perhaps someone is dealing with some storms on their job. They are facing conflict with their bosses and they are facing high firing and delays on the job, layoffs. Maybe you're in school and you are facing some kind of difficulty in school. We, we all are facing some kind of storm in our lives. But just maybe, maybe everything is all right with you maybe there is someone that i'm speaking to right now everything is all right in your life right now it's sugar and spice and everything nice my friends if things are good with you right now just hold on and take this message and put it in the bank because one day you're going to need it 
Sun may be shining in your life right now, but there, there is a storm on the horizon. So take this message and put it in the bank because one day you're going to need it. One day there is going to come a storm in your life. And so it is here that Jesus' disciples were in a storm. I want you to listen to this particular episode. The Bible says that Jesus had just finished a miracle of feeding 5,000 with a few fish and a few loaves of bread. Then he told his disciples to get in the boat on the Sea of Galilee and go across the sea to a city called Bethesda and he told them, I'll meet you on the other side. And the Bible says that Jesus went up on the mountain to pray alone. And here it is. The disciples are going across the Sea of Galilee. And suddenly the Bible says in, in the middle of the sea, a storm blows up. Put a peg there because... I need to tell you that sometimes storms come into our lives suddenly and unexpectedly. Sometimes we get up and everything is all right. Hey, we get up in the morning, we can sing the songs, and, and all of a sudden everything breaks down. A storm comes into our lives. That's the way life is. That's the way it was with a man, Job. Old Job was enjoying life. He was enjoying life with his, his wife and his children and everything was going all right. And then the bottom fell out all in one day. A storm blew up and a storm killed all of his children, ten children. Thieves came and they stole all of his cattle. All of his houses were destroyed in the storm. And yes, there was a physical storm in his life. And I tell you, skin cancer came to his life and he was afflicted with sores all over his body. His friends turned on him and even his wife turned on him. And I tell you, a storm came into his life all of a sudden. And that's the way life is. I want to tell you, my friends, God knows when you're in a storm. God knows when you're in the storm. The Lord knows that you are in the storm. Jesus knew these men, these disciples. He knew they were in a storm. Matter of fact, he sent them into the storm. Jesus knows everything. And, and when Jesus told them to go across the Sea of Galilee, Jesus knew that they were going into a storm. Jesus, Jesus knows everything. He, he, he is omnipotent. And if he did not want them to go into the storm, he would have stopped them. But, but Jesus sent them into the storm. Let me tell you something, friends. Let me tell you something. God will allow you to go into a storm. Or God will allow, or, or God will send a storm in your life. If you are a child of God, sometimes God will, will allow you to go through a storm. And sometimes God will send a storm into your life. Yes, he will. That's the way it was with Jonah. The Bible said God sent a storm in the life of Jonah. God, he disobeyed God. And the Bible said that Jonah got on a ship and he was going to touch us. And the Bible said God sent a storm on the sea. The Bible said the men of the ship threw him overboard. Then God, the Bible said, God sent a big fish and swallowed up Jonah. God sent the fish and God sent the storm. 
God allowed the storm to come into jo unto Job's life. God allowed the storm to come into Paul's life. Paul had a thorn in the flesh and God allowed it. Matter of fact, God sent the storm to Paul. And so it is, if you are going through a storm right now, either God allows you to go through the storm or God sent the storm in your life. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we don't understand what we're going through. And sometimes we don't understand that we're pulling our hair out, we are popping pills, and we, we lose our mind, and we, and we lose our faith, because sometimes we just don't understand how, why we are going through what we're going through. But can I whisper something in your ear today? The Lord wants you to be in the storm. Oh, yes, he does. The Lord wants you to be in a storm. You need to be in a storm. And, and Jesus knew that these disciples were going into a storm. And, and I tell you, the Lord, the Lord wants you to be in a storm for various reasons. God wants you to be in a storm. He wants you to be in a storm because in a storm you can learn some valuable lessons. Some lessons you cannot learn sitting in Bible class and sitting on the, the comfortable pews. There are some lessons you cannot learn when you're comfortable. There are some lessons you can only learn in the storm. You have to go through the trials and the tribulation to learn them. You, you got to go through the fiery furnace to learn them. You got to go to the hospital to learn them. You got to go to the school of hard knocks to learn them. And there's another reason God wants you to be in a storm. Uh, God wants to turn you around. There are some of us who are headed in the wrong direction. And God has to send a storm to turn us around. That's the way it was with Jonah. Oh, Jonah disobeyed God, and, and God sent a storm to turn Jonah around. And perhaps you were in that situation today, God. God is trying to turn you around. You're going in the wrong direction. There's another reason God wants you in the storm. God wants you in the storm to humble you. Some of us are too high. That was the situation with the Apostle Paul. God had to send a, a thorn in the flesh to bring Paul down. He, he was too high. He was haughty and he was arrogant and God had to burst his bubble. Yes. There's another reason. God wants you in a storm. God wants you in a storm to test your faith. Because some of us don't know how strong we are until we go through the storm. God has to test us. James talked about it in James chapter 1 and verse number 2. He talked about the trying of our faith. Work at patience. Then there was another reason, there was another reason why God would allow us in the storm. Did you believe that God allows and send the storms to bless us? Yes, he does. Sometimes the, the trials and the tribulations of life are only blessings in disguise. Do you remember Joseph? A good man, a righteous man. Old Joseph had the uh, suffer many things in life. His brothers hated him and threw him in a pit. They sold him to Potiphar and Potiphar's wife accused him of rape and he spent many years in prison. But it was all because God was getting ready to bless him. Came the vice president of Egypt. It was all a setup because God was getting ready to bless him. My friend, that's the reason why God allows and God sends problems in our lives, storms in our lives. But God sees you in the storm. 
God sees you in the storm. He, he sees your pain. He sees your suffering. And the Bible says this about these disciples. Jesus was watching them in the storm. The Bible says that Jesus was sitting on the mountain. Looking at them while they were rowing and they were fighting the storm. They were, they were about to go down and they were wrestling in the storm. And Jesus is sitting down watching them. Can you imagine that? Winds are howling, the waves are beating against the ship, the thunder is rowing, the lightning is flashing, and, and they are trying to keep the ship from capsizing, and, and Jesus sits down and he just watches, watches them. There was another storm one day on this same lake. Do you remember when the Bible says that Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and they were going across the Sea of Galilee? Another storm blew up and the Bible says that, that the disciples were wrestling in this storm and the Bible said that Jesus was in the back of the ship, sound asleep. They woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, don't you care that we perish? Does it seem sometimes that Jesus is sleeping on your problem? You are calling out to Jesus. Jesus won't answer. The Bible says that they were rowing. And Jesus was watching. I tell you, sometimes. You call on Jesus, sometimes he won't answer. I said sometimes he will not answer. And sometimes it's puzzling to the child of God. Why Jesus won't answer. You need to keep on listening to this message, my friends. Because the Bible says that Jesus was watching them rowing and wrestling with the storm. Jesus watching. And then the Bible says that Jesus then came to the disciples and in the storm. The Bible says, this text says that he came to them at three o'clock in the morning. They left the land. They, they left the shore at six o'clock and then Jesus comes at three o'clock. You see the picture? Three o'clock, nine hours, Jesus just watches them. And now he comes, the Bible says, he comes after nine hours, he comes now. Jesus sometimes does not come when you want him. Sometimes he delays. And that's a, there's a reason why Jesus delays. He wants, to, he wants to teach us a valuable lesson. Then the Bible says Jesus comes now. Can you see Jesus now coming, walking on the water? The, the storm, is, storm is raging. He comes to the disciples and the Bible says he comes to the ship where they are. And the Bible says that when Jesus get to the ship, they were terrified and they thought Jesus was a ghost. I want you to listen to what Jesus says to them. Oh, you need to listen. Jesus says to them, Jesus says to them, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. While they were in the storm, Jesus says, good, be of good cheer. That's a message for us today, friends. While you're in the storm, be careful about your attitude. While you're in the storm, you need to have some cheer. Jesus said, be of good cheer. Rejoice while you're going through the storm. While you're in the storm, rejoice. Jesus said these words many years ago. Blessed are you. Who are persecuted, are persecuted, Jesus says. 
men shall persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. But Jesus says, rejoice. Did you hear that? While you are being persecuted, while people are talking about you, while you are going through the storm, Jesus says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. While Paul was on death row, and Paul was on death row in prison, Paul said these words, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Throughout the Bible, God tells his people when you're going through the storm, rejoice. When Paul went through his storm and when he had the thorn in the flesh, he said these words, most gladly therefore will I glory in my infirmity. The Bible said these words, the Bible said these words, the Bible said these words of Peter and 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which are to try you, but he said, but rejoice over and over and over and over again. God says, while you're in the storm. Rejoice. Watch your attitude. Don't you be depressed. Don't you murmur and complain. Don't you start cussing and fussing. But, but Jesus said, God says, while you're in the midst of a storm, you need to rejoice. Be of good cheer. You ought to get you a song while you're in the middle of the storm. You ought to get you a song together. You ought to say, precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, and let me stand. I am weak and I am torn. Through the storm and through the night, lead me, Lord, to the light. You ought to get you a song while you're going through the storms. Jesus. The Bible says, listen to this, comes walking on the water, comes to the ship where they are, looks at them while they are rowing and trying to get the ship under control. And, and the Bible says this, that Jesus pretends to pass them by. Did you see that in the text? Jesus getting ready to pass them by. Why, Jesus? Because Jesus wanted them to call upon him. Jesus come to the ship and, and he was going to pass them by. And they began to cry out. I tell you something, my friend, Jesus wants you to call upon him. Call upon the Lord in the middle of your storm. Jesus wants you to call on him in the middle of the storm. Call on him. Yes, they called upon him. That reminds me of a song. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, hear my humble cry. Oh, Lord, don't you pass me by. Lord, I know you're calling on others. Lord, I know you're busy, but Lord, don't pass me by. In the middle of the storm, you need to call on Jesus. Lord, don't pass me by. I know that you're busy. I know you're busy running the world. I know there are other things that you are. But Lord, don't pass me by. Seemingly, that's what the apostles were saying. The disciples were saying. And Jesus got to the boat, the Bible says. He got into the ship. The Bible says when he got into the boat, when he got into the boat, the, the storm ceased. The Bible says they were amazed. They were astonished. 
Cause what this storm was about. Are you listening? What this storm was about and the reason why Jesus allowed them to go into the storm. The reason why Jesus waited nine hours to come to them in the storm. Jesus was trying to teach them a valuable lesson. Jesus was trying to teach them that he was the son of God. He was trying to deepen their faith. Because the Bible says this in the text. That they considered not the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. Did you get that? They had just before, before, before they left. Jesus had, had performed a miracle. Five loaves and a few fish and he fed 5,000. Still the disciples didn't believe that he was the son of God. Jesus had to take them through this lesson let them know that I am the Son of God. And the Bible says, when the storm ceased and when, when, when Jesus got in the boat, the disciples said, surely this is the Son of God. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. You're going through the storm. Maybe God is trying to deepen your faith. Maybe God is trying to deepen your faith. Every time you go through a storm, your, your faith should deepen, my friends. Every time you go through a storm, you should get stronger and stronger. It's said of the old, the old acorn tree, the old oak tree, that every time an oak tree goes through a storm, its roots sink deeper and deeper in the ground. And the oak tree becomes stronger and stronger after every storm. And that's the situation in your life. Every time you go through a storm, you ought to get stronger. You ought to get closer to the Lord. That's what the Lord wants. Sink your roots deeper and deeper into the Lord every time you go through a storm. The storm you are going through right now, when you come out on the other side, you ought to be stronger. You ought to have more faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the message today. Whatever you're going through today, there's a message in your storm. There's a reason why God is allowing you to go through the storm. There's a reason. God is allowing you to go through the storm and you ought to come out on the other side stronger than you were. That's the message today. This brings us to the Lord's Supper. You who cannot attend worship service, we bring the Lord's Supper to you. The fruit of the vine, the bread. Let us pray. Oh God in heaven, thank you for this fruit of the vine and this bread, which is a representation of your broken body on Calvary for us. He died for us, and we thank you for that. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup. He gave it to them. He said, drink ye all of it. This is my blood. Shed for you, Jesus says. That's why Jesus died. And we do this every Sunday to commemorate and to remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. And while we're here and before we close, we always like to thank you for your contribution. And even in this pandemic, my friends, people are giving to the church. They're giving to this congregation. And we thank you so much. Many of you are giving online. and. We just thank you so much for your contribution. We're using your contributions to spread the gospel and to help people in our area. Thank you so much. God bless you. God keep you today. Okay.
again.